Eric Darling here, uh, all by myself. Um, and we're, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how you can change some of the default output of uh, SP Quickie Store. And uh, along the way, I'm sure that we'll, we'll see lots of fabulous, fantastic things. So the first thing that I want to show you is um, how you, as a data professional, can uh, learn more about or learn, learn the full capabilities of SP Quickie Store. And it is, most of it is going to be by using the help parameter. Um, I know that a lot of us in the tech world have trouble asking for help, unless it's Google. Uh, but it, I, I put this in here for a reason. It's because we hold these truths to be self-documenting. Right? Just like PowerShell code is self-documenting. And uh, if, you, if you hit the help, help parameter, uh, those P's are really going to tell me how far off the, the audio sync is on this thing. Uh, you'll get a little bit of information, a little greeting up here. tells you a little bit about what Quickie Store is, what it can do. And then the second output is all of the parameters that you can put into SP Quickie Store. Uh, the data type of those parameters, uh, a description, valid inputs, and what the default, uh, the default value for them all is. Um, so if there's stuff that you want to filter on specifically, you can do that. Uh, we're going to use some of them today. We're not going to use all of them today. Some of them will be in a different video. Uh, specifically, I think the ones about looking for a procedure and specific plan IDs and stuff will be uh, the next video. Uh, but this one here is just a little bit about how you can change the uh, default output. So obviously, passing in a database name, well, pretty critical step since query stores on database by database. Uh, I recently added a get all databases uh, uh, parameter to a quickie store. So if you want to scavenge all of your query store databases, you can do that. So the first thing I'm going to show you is uh, how you can change the number of queries that get uh, sent back to you. Um, and that is by using the top parameter. By default, top will just give you the top 10. Uh, I try to keep it to a reasonable number because Often I find that if you start bringing back 20, 30, 40, 50 lines, uh, the further down the results are, sort of the less valuable they get. It's a little bit overwhelming. There are only so many store procedures you can tune at a time anyway. But if you want to get more back, and this can actually be helpful if you have um, sort of like longer store procedures where you feel like there might be, like if you get the top 10 back and you're like, well, there are like 30 queries in this store procedure. Looking at the top 10 is good, but you kind of want to see all of them. You can get a more expansive result set uh, for that. But I'll, I'll show you about this store procedure thing uh, in the next video. But if we get the top 10, or sorry, we change top to 20, we will now get 20 results back here. And uh, you can see that I've really been pounding on kind of the same query over and over again. Um, another thing that you can change is the sort order. Now I'm going to go back to the help parameter real quick because I want to paste in and show you all of the different sort orders that you can actually use when you're searching through Query Store. So you can use CPU, logical reads, physical reads, writes, duration, memory, tempdb, and executions. Um, these will all sort by the average, not the total. Uh, only because what I find in my day-to-day -day consulting is that uh, if you sort by totals, you tend to get stuff that executes a lot, but doesn't take a very long time to run. And usually I want to find the stuff that does the worst in the average execution. Right? You might find some outliers where they had like one thing where it did like a billion reads or something or used a billion CPU ticks uh, and then the rest of the time it's pretty quick but you know th these are good things to sort of figure out so these are all the possible sort orders you can use again that's all available if you use the help parameter you can see all the all the valid inputs for everything but this time we're just going to use executions as an example uh, remember by default it uses average cpu uh, and if we look 
by executions. This, this might actually prove my point a little bit, where uh, we have a lot of executions for some of these things. Well, not even like a lot for what we're looking at, but the average duration and the average CPU time is, uh, is pretty high. Uh, what I find uh, the executions parameter is good at showing you uh, is stuff like scalar UDFs, because scalar UDFs don't execute once per query unless they're in line 2019, 2022, Freud, fun stuff. Uh, if they're inlined, then they don't execute uh, it, it te technically as often. Um, but uh, if they are not inlined or not inlineable, uh, then scalar UDFs will execute once per row. You know, you put it in a select list with ten the returns like top 10,000, that UDF is going to have to execute 10,000 times. Uh, if you put it in like a, like a where clause or something, and let's say your table has a million rows in it and all million rows come out, that UDF is going to have to run a million times once per row, produce a result, and then have the predicate applied to it. So uh, those can really rack up executions very quickly, and that's usually what I use the executions sort order for. Uh, probably the other sort order that I use the most day-to-day -day is memory, uh, because I, uh, I think I said in the last video that uh, finding queries that uh, use a lot of memory are uh, is often a good way to find uh, queries that are ripe for tuning. Uh, usually you'll find like a big sort or something in there and you can, you know, index your, uh, your data more appropriately to make the sort not, not require memory, you know, like index order, match sort order. Sometimes you can fix that. Um, so that's another good thing to look at. Um, another thing that actually has been kind of cropping up a, a bit in consulting, uh, consulting work is, uh, if you have a query that has a lot of like derived joins, subqueries, other things like that, Sometimes you'll find that, like, SQL Server has a, a cap for the memory grant, right? Typically, like, a query can ask for, unless you have resource governor enabled or using the min or max grant percent hints, uh, SQL Server has a hard cap of, like, 20-25% of your max server memory setting for a single query. And so if your query has a lot of subqueries in it, whether it's, you know, uh, multiple CTEs, multiple, you know, derived joins, subqueries, stuff like that, um, th uh, things where you know, you could break up those parts of the query, you can often get the memory grant as a whole to be smaller because you have a bunch of small queries asking for memory grants rather than contributing to one giant memory grant and one big query. Um, I have always found myself quite against big monolithic queries, uh, but this is another good reason to, to do that because if uh, query operators in a big plan uh, are unable to share memory from you know, one, uh, one operator to another. Sometimes that happens uh, if you don't have any, uh, you know, sort of stopping points between them, like sorts, hashes, other things like that. Um, then uh, queries will ask for very, very large memory grants to do things where if you break them up, you can get the memory grant reduced quite a bit. So those are the uh, words of wisdom I have for you. Thanks for watching. Uh, another thing that you can do uh, to limit uh, or to change the, uh, the default results uh, is to use the start and end date parameters. That's right down here. So uh, let's say that uh, you have some other monitoring that's uh, showed a, a CPU spike or you, know, you started getting a bunch of errors and other stuff on like a weekend and you want to just look at a weekend, then you can use the start and end date parameters to set caps on which portion of data you want. Um, like I said in the last video, by default, you get the last week of data, the last seven days. Uh, but if you want to change that to focus in on a particular day, particular event, you can absolutely do that too. And just hope to, uh, hope to whatever, whatever you have faith in that uh, you, you, you query store captured what you want for that. So if you, if you wanted to see what I was up to last weekend, it was not a whole hell of a lot. Um, this is all just background system queries. Um, I appar apparently I wasn't home much. I wasn't doing much last weekend. I think I think I was out and about quite a bit, working on my tan, working on my bar tan, uh, and so I was not uh, hammering SQL Server with uh, all sorts of um, you know bad queries. Anyway, uh, that's sort of a few different ways that you can uh, look at uh, change the default. Uh, output ordering, what we're focusing on, uh, and the uh, default span of time 
that we are analyzing when we're looking at query store. Uh, that's about it for this one. Next video, we're going to talk about filtering to specific procedures, hashes, plan IDs, query IDs, stuff like that. Um, and so I hope you'll join me there. Uh, remember, like, subscribe, love me. Please love me. I mean, or just, kind of, I mean, just, just like me enough to watch the video, I guess. That's all I really need. View, views, I guess, right? Big views. Big view, big view energy. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to get working on the, the scripts for the next one, and I'll see you over there. Goodbye. Hopefully not forever.